Today's video is sponsored by Blue Tally, the ultimate in IT asset management. For more details, visit them today at bluetallyapp.com. In this week's video, I'm going to check out what's new and cool in Entra ID's conditional access. Microsoft have been working hard on this, so you best buckle up. This is a good one. Hi everyone, it's Andy here. Really nice to see you again and welcome to my channel, especially if this is your first visit. On today's episode, I thought I'd take a look at Entra ID's conditional access. Conditional access has been around for a long time, but recently Microsoft have been inserting many, many new features. In fact, more new features than you can shake a stick at. So on this episode, I thought I'd break them down and take a look at them and talk about exactly what they are and how they work. Now, just to remind you, if you haven't subscribed, we would love to have you on board. So bump the subscribe button up there, ring that bell, and come and join my learning community. And if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below. Just like to quickly mention that uh, in a few weeks' time, I'm going to be running a couple of masterclasses. So these are uh, two and three day courses that you can be involved with uh, and do some deep learning. The first is a cybersecurity masterclass, and the second is an Entra ID uh, masterclass. So if you definitely want to join us, details down below. So I think without any further ado, I think it's about time we jump in and take a look at these new features in Conditional Access. Enjoy. And conditional Access is just one of those features that just is constantly uh, being updated. So I'm going to come down here in the portal. I'm going to click on Conditional Access, and let's take a look at some of these new features. Well, first of all, we have a monitoring tab, and this has been in the portal for a little bit, but we have a new monitoring feature. And this can be quite useful because you can see you have the different color scapes here. So it will show you if there's any kind of a any access denied or any access granted. It shows you your busy periods. And of course, you can drill down into this and get more information. And you can filter that as well, which is really useful. Um, so with that in mind, I'm then going to click into policies. Then you'll be familiar with the fact that you can go in and we have a number of different uh, templates that you can use. So things like secure foundation, so good baselines, zero trust, uh, remote working, and so on. Um, I'm not going to cover these here. Um, needless to say, we just have a few more templates that you can have a look at. For me, no offense, but I like, I like the control of being able to create my own templates. So. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to come into policies and here in policies, just a couple of things. I'm going to go into named locations here. And I know I've mentioned this before, but again, it's important that you configure this because this is particularly useful for things like exclusions. So you can come in to exclude a country or by a geolocation, for example, IP address. You can um, add a IP address range and bring this in as a trusted location. So for example, I'm here in Norway this week. If I had an office in Bergen, let's say, I could then add the IP address range, either 32-bit um, or 128-bit uh, hex address, of course, there. Um, we also have um, things like uh, authentication strengths. So authentication strengths. Um, for things like f uh, your different um, strengths of authentication mechanisms. So you get um, two or three kind of default ones. If you use MFA or multi-factor authentication, it can include a phone and it can also include a text message. And as I mentioned previously, Kevin Mitnick, who is a famous hacker, uh, he did some research on this and he determined that these two types could potentially be hacked. However, what you can do here is you can create your own authentication strength. And you can basically say, no, I'm going to only support phishing-resistant MFA or FIDO 
technologies. And FIDO, of course, we now have pass keys, and pass keys can be deployed on mobile devices, of which I'll come back to again shortly. So you can see I've gone ahead and I've created a policy just for Oslo, and I've called this my Oslo authentication strength, and it's just using Windows Hello for Business, and it's including those FIDO or pass keys. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come in here into policies. So here in the policies, I'm gonna create my own policy. Now, just super important, if you're creating a policy, folks, um, be careful with the all users policies because these can potentially affect admins. And the last thing that you want is you don't want to lock yourself out. So again, when you're creating conditional access policies, just keep that in mind. You don't want to have uh, any kind of any hassles. So I'm going to call this my Oslo uh, CA policy. I'll call it CA policy one. And again, I can specify, is this for a, a group of users? Um, do I want to include, exclude? Um, so you can do this for all users or selected users and groups. Now, this is quite interesting. Um, Microsoft are really expanding their use of guest and external users. So here you can specify which organizations so in a multi-tenant scenario um, I can basically say every uh, organization or you can select only specific organizations you know so if you've got multiple tenants in a tenant to tenant scenario now I did a session on this um, a couple of months ago but what I'm I might actually do another follow-up on this and go into this in a little bit more detail it's quite interesting so you can go in and you can select your tenant organization so it, and again in a multi-tenant you want to use the tenant ID uh, which is on your home page there and just paste that in and that what you're doing here is you're doing specific conditional access policies, but for that particular tenant. So that's kind of super, super useful, actually. Now, the other thing that you can also do, um, so again, that's guests and or external users. And the other thing is you might say, hey, I want to do it for specific admin roles. So, for example, if I use an admin, you might want to put restrictions on where that user admin can actually administer. So if you only want them being able to use that portal from in the office rather than being at home, for example. And the third option here, as I said, is users and groups. So I'm in Oslo this week, so I'm going to come down into Oslo and I'm going to create a policy for my Oslo HQ. So that's the first thing. Um, again, conditional access is for signals. So these users in Oslo. And I'm going to target um, which specific resource. So do you want to target a specific app? So all cloud apps or um, selected app here. Or do you want to base it on a particular user's actions? So things like register security information or register a device. So if they're trying to register their mobile device into enter ID, I only want them doing this in a specific location, for example. So the other one is Microsoft's uh, Global Secure Access or SSE, Secure Service Edge scenario. And at the moment, I've only got three profiles. So I've got a, do I want to secure my Microsoft 365 traffic or do I want to secure my internet traffic and enforce those policies on those particular users. So if I go, if I just show you one little thing, you'll notice here that my network option, I can go in and I can configure that. However, um, if I've got global secure access on and chose to uh, deploy the traffic here, you can now see that that traffic is being managed by uh, my SSE. Um, and this option is no longer <clears throat> available. Okay, so that said, um, this is new. So let's have a look at the network configuration. 
So this is cool because I can go ahead, configure it, and I can say, do I want to include or exclude specific networks, all trusted networks and locations, compliant networks. So again, this is a new feature. So I can say, I only want to allow compliant or approved networks in my environment. This is currently in preview. And or do I want to choose selected networks? So for example, I've got a geolocation here in Norway. I only want my users from coming from this IP address range or this location. So that said, of course, if you're trusting any network location, you may also want to exclude specific things for the purpose of multi-factor authentication. So this policy is essentially going to require multi-factor authentication for any network except my trusted networks. You understand? So again, I really like that. And it's nice to see that they've simplified that as well. So basically then that's my rules. So basically those users in those particular groups who are trying to access those specific resources. And in this case, I'm gonna keep it nice and simple. I'm gonna say just a couple of apps. I'm gonna say Microsoft 365 and also the um, admin portals. And one of the things about the admin portals is it's super important to prevent things like token replay attacks or adversary in the middle. And this is a, I'll show you a new feature that basically takes that into account. So the, so those are the resources and obviously your network is considered to be a resource. So now we're talking about, you need to meet these particular um, requirements or conditions. So user risk, again, this is nothing new. I'm just going to choose high and medium risk. I'll also choose the sign-in risk here. Again, pretty much the same level. Do remember that this is identity protection. So enter ID identity protection. For this part, you need a P2 license, whereas for conditional access, you simply need a P1 license, which is really good. So we also have a new feature. This is the Insider Risk Management Preview, and this adds a couple of additional conditional access policies um, from Microsoft Purview uh, for Insider Risk Management, which is an awesome feature, by the way. Um, now, you can see here, I'm just really interested in the elevated risk level. So should an incident occur and the user's risk is elevated, I want to be uh, alerted or I may want to take conditional access uh, and action. Now, um, again, really nice. Um, the other thing that we've got, of course, you've got device platform, so nothing really changes here, so I'm just gonna choose any device for the purpose of this demo. Um, we've already added the locations, so for the purpose of this demo, you can see that those same options that we looked at earlier now filter through here. So I'm going to say, yeah, I'm just going to accept all trusted or any location, but you can see here um, it's excluding trusted locations. So again, this is just a shortcut to that same menu that we had earlier. Um, coming down, uh, client apps. Now, this is kind of important, and I've said this many, many times. Um, now, at the moment, we're using Microsoft 365 and also a policy for the admin portals. So you're definitely going to want to have a browser and also the mobile apps, but you definitely want to switch off those legacy applications because potentially they don't support um, phishing resistant MFA or indeed MFA itself. So again, that could be a potential risk. So the final thing then is you can also filter for a specific type of device. So only allow Dell XPS laptops onto your network. But this is also brand new. Um, this is something called an authentication uh, flow. And I really like this. So an authentication flow kind of works like this. So we go ahead and we can configure it. And we have two options here, a device code flow and something called an authentication transfer. So a device code flow uh, is a little bit like working with an Apple device. So you might start something on one device and then it will flow to the next device. 
So it won't ask you to re-authenticate because, for example, you're already authenticated. You can also do an authentication transfer as well. So this is where you can authenticate on one and transfer the session to a second device. This is really nice and in fact, you can also have both. So for more details on this, check out the Learn uh, document there on Learn. So for more details, go ahead, check out the document on learn.microsoft.com uh, just there. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to accept that and that is an authentication flow. So based on those conditions, I am going to say, yep, I want to either grant or block access. Um, do you want to require multi-factor authentication or do you want to require an authentication strength? And this is that organ uh, authentication strength that I mentioned earlier. And you can see here, I've created my own Oslo authentication strength. Now, just another uh, few things here. Again, I've covered most of this previously. So again, another one here is require the device to be marked as compliant. Again, very important, making sure you've got the latest updates. If it's hybrid, hybrid joined, of course, require an approved app list if you if you want to do that and also requiring app protection as well so app protection policies of course very popular in Microsoft Intune now um, I'm gonna say uh, that's fine I'm gonna go ahead and select those so based on those conditions I am going to say yep yeah, I'm going to grant access just to review that but I do require that phishing resistant um, or passwordless authentication method. Now, the final thing that you can control, of course, is the session policy. And again, I want to show you another brand new feature here. Um, if I just zoom in here, you can see require token protection for signed in sessions. So again, I can click into that and this will basically put water on the fire of any hacker who tries to do an adversary in the middle attack and tries to steal your session cookie or token. And this basically prevents this attack. So again, this is one of the reasons why I chose the admin portal on Microsoft 365 uh, app as an example. So really powerful set of features. So there you have it, conditional access. So there you have it. What's new and cool in conditional access? Some pretty cool stuff, huh? Hey, listen, I really hope you enjoyed that. If you did, give me a big thumbs up. It does help the channel. And if you've got questions and comments, as always, get those down below. Thanks very much for tuning in. I'll see you next time. Take care. Hey, thanks so much for dropping by today. Here's a couple of videos that you may enjoy. And while you're here, go ahead, click on the subscribe button and you won't miss out.